Today we are going to talk about my tips for you to achieve your best score on the Duolingo English test. My name is Sally and welcome to my channel. So for today I thought we would first talk about some general tips for the Duolingo English test. Then I will go through the question types and give you suggestions for each question type. And finally, in the end of this video, I'm going to give you some thoughts about when you first sit down to take this test, my general advice for you about that. As we get started, the first thing I want to tell you is please set goals for yourself, but remember to set realistic goals. If you've just started speaking English, please don't expect to be able to achieve a perfect score or a near perfect score. Aim high but consider your level of English and aim within your range of English. My first piece of general advice is to practice each question type individually. Really understand what each kind of question wants you to do. It's a learning skill. You can do this by taking the practice tests, but you need to go beyond because there's not a lot of variety on the practice tests. You can watch YouTube videos. I have some on my channel. You can do a search on YouTube for other channels who may be making the same kind of content. But also Facebook groups. There are Facebook groups where people share question types that they are making for each other or questions that they've gotten on the test. I'm not sure about Reddit groups, but you can try. Try to find some social media groups. My second piece of general advice is to do that Duolingo practice test. Do it frequently. And I know the questions repeat, but the point is it trains your brain to go from one type to another type quickly. It's sort of hard to be trained on answering one type of question and then you're giving something you're not expecting, your brain has to shift gears. Your brain has to shift from see test to describe a picture or those quick pictures, that three second pictures. You really have to practice going from one question type to another. Okay, let's move on to the individual question types. For the adaptive questions, each question type can appear on the test three to seven times. This is important for my first question type, and that is describe a picture. So for this, my advice to you is to memorize some phrases for describing a picture for that introductory statement. You want to have a few different phrases in your memory to start each question type. This is a picture of. The next time you get the question, this is a photograph of. Maybe the third time, this picture depicts. The fourth time, this is a depiction of. By using a variety of introductory phrases, it will help you have variety within your test and it will help you achieve better scores. So you can practice writing out the prompts, but have in your mind some general ways to start the phrase, to start the prompt. That way you don't have to try to think of what to say and you have variety. So the second question type that I want to talk about today is the dictations. On the practice test, they're a little bit shorter and the speaker speaks a little bit more slowly than on the actual test. So my advice to you is to find dictations and practice those. I have some on my channel, but you can also do a general search on YouTube and find other people that offer dictations. It's good practice for the test, but also for note taking skills. It's practice for holding information in your mind long enough to write it down. Okay, the third question type that we're going to talk about is elicited speech. So for this section of the test, you're going to read something out loud. And the best way to practice this is by reading out loud. You want to practice enunciating the syllables, but you don't want to do it too slowly or too quickly 
So practicing this, practice enunciating the syllables, and if you tend to read too fast, practice slowing down a little bit. If you tend to read too slowly, practice picking up your pace a little bit. Okay, the fourth question type is the yes-no vocabulary. There is a reading component and a listening component. And for both of them, you just need exposure to English words. The goal is to identify whether the word is a real word or not. So it's very helpful if you have a large vocabulary, but if you can't remember the definitions to a lot of words, reading words, reading word lists, listening to spoken English, all of these things will help you recognize whether you've seen a word before or heard a word before. So my advice is to look up English vocabulary lists. There's something called the academic vocabulary list. Now people ask me for specific word lists for this test. Duolingo has not made that available. I do not know what words you will be asked. Based on my practice with this test, the sources are pretty various. There's a lot of different source materials. So just exposure to different articles, news articles, Wikipedia articles, um, literature, all of these things help. So read anything. You don't have to remember the meanings of the words. This test is checking your recognition of words. Audio as well. Listen to books. Listen to news stories. Listen to anything in English. But I think it's very helpful to read word lists for this particular test. It's also helpful to study prefixes and suffixes and to learn word forms. That way you can recognize the ending of a word. You can recognize the beginning. It helps you learn to recognize typical patterns for words. Okay, the fifth type of question is the C-test. And a good way to practice for the C-test is to actually make your own test questions. By doing this, you're exposing yourself to different articles when you're breaking them down, and you're really looking closely at the words. So you get used to seeing what's at the ending of a word and what's at the beginning of a word. If you divide the word in half to break it, you start to see patterns in the endings. You see patterns in the beginnings of words. So to make your own, find a paragraph or part of a paragraph from any source. It can be news. I go back to Wikipedia all the time. Any article that's in English, leave the first sentence and the last sentence intact, and then break just about every other word into half and count out the blank places. You can do this for yourself and wait a few days to a week and then go back and re-answer the question. Or you can make these for a friend and you and a friend can share questions that you make for each other. It's also helpful to practice tests. And by doing this, you can go to YouTube. My channel has practice C test questions. I'm sure other channels do as well. And then, like I said earlier, Facebook groups, Reddit groups, any groups of people who are studying for the Duolingo English test, you can make a friend and make questions for each other. For the scored open-ended prompts, there's a speaking one and a writing one. And I think the best way to practice those is to look up essay prompts. You can look them up on the internet. Essay prompts tend to repeat across tests. So for example, a prompt on the IELTS test may be similar to a prompt on this test. So you can look up essay prompts for test prep. You can look up essay prompts for high school students, essay prompts for college students take the prompt and practice rewriting it as your topic sentence. So for example, if the question says, describe a time in your life that you overcame a challenge, you may say, a time in my life that I overcame a challenge was when something. If the question asks you, what is the greatest invention of the 20th century? You can say, 
the greatest invention of the 20th century is. By practicing rewriting prompts as topic sentences, you're preparing yourself to get started with your answer. And sometimes getting started is the hardest part. So practice doing that. And then also take some time and think about what points you would make for each one. Remember, you don't have to write a perfect essay. There's not enough time to write a perfect essay. You're just trying to show that you can organize your ideas and show a good range of vocabulary. Another question type on this test, they show you a picture and you're given three seconds to respond to what that picture is. I recommend remembering certain categories. So think of people, animals, tools. You get the point. If you can't think of the word hammer, you'll have memorized the word tool. If you don't remember buffalo, you'll know animal. If you want to be more specific, you can say mammal, bird, reptile. Memorize categories. That way, if you can't think of what something specifically is, you can think of that category so you have something to say. All right, there is one other type of question that is on the Duolingo English test, and that is that writing sample and speaking sample that is sent to the university that you're applying to. So these questions are not part of the score, but they're important because they do go to the school. And to practice for these, I think it's very useful to do the same thing that you do for the scored open-ended writing prompts. Practice taking essay prompts and rewording them as your topic sentence. Another thing you can do for the speaking section is practice talking to your camera. You want to make eye contact with the camera because that prompt is going to a person at the other end. So your goal for that is to make a good connection with the person that's watching your speaking sample. For this question, it's really important to focus on developing your ideas. The person's not going to pay as much attention to grammar mistakes. They're going to focus on your ideas and your organization of ideas. I have a video about each of the writing prompts, so you can watch those for practice. All right, the final thing that I want to talk about is when you're actually taking your Duolingo English test, the first questions may be very difficult or they may be very easy. But you're going to be nervous, and if you get questions you don't know the answer to right from the start, it may make you feel like you've messed up your whole test. It hasn't. It's okay if you miss those questions. You do not receive negative points for questions that you get wrong. So it's okay to guess on the questions, and also just consider those first few questions as an adjustment period. If you miss them, you're going to get more questions. The computer is going to ask you as many questions as it needs to to establish your level. So this means that you may have fewer questions than your friend. The computer algorithm decides when it knows your level. It's not going to base your entire level on a couple of questions. So if you miss one in the beginning, it's okay. Really, try not to panic. Just take a deep breath. Let the first few questions come, whatever level they are, and remind yourself that the test is overall going to adapt to how you do overall. It's not going to focus on those first few questions. All right, I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. And as always, if you have requests for other videos, please let me know in the comments as well. Thank you for watching.